Today I'm going to talk about democratization, the process by which a nation state becomes democratic. We can generally think of democratization as consisting of three steps. The first step are preconditions, and that helps us to understand why do states become democratic. The second step is the how. How do states become democratic? Or the mode of transition. And then the third step involves consolidation or endurance. Here we're concerned with the deepening of democracy. So let's look at each of the three steps in a little bit greater detail. So step one, preconditions. What are the necessary requisites for democratic government? The most compelling argument for preconditions is that of modernization theory. Increases in urbanization, wealth, education, rising levels of socioeconomic development, this creates a large middle class. And this middle class will eventually demand representative government, which only a democratic system can provide. One of the earliest scholars to talk about modernization theory was Seymour Martin Lipset in 1959. He was really the first to assert that there's this empirical relationship between development and democracy. Seymour Martin Lipset hypothesized that as societies develop economically, their citizens will no longer tolerate repressive political regimes. Lipset argued that the rise in per capita GDP would trigger a transition to democracy. He said, quote, the more well-to-do a nation, the greater the chances that it will sustain democracy, end quote. So modernization theory really is our strongest explanatory variable when we talk about why states become democratic. It also helps to explain how states sustain democracy and provide legitimacy to governments through increasing levels of wealth. It's also worth noting that modernization theory provides us with an endogenous explanation of democratization. And all this means is that democratization results from development under authoritarianism. That is, poor authoritarian countries reach some level of development, and once they reach that level, they will transition to democracy. The second step in the democratization process is the mode of transition. That is, how do states become democratic? What is the actual process for this occurring? A regime transition is, quote, the interval between one political regime and another, end quote. That's a, by O'Donnell and Schmitter in a 1986 work. Democratic transition, then, is the interval between a non-democratic regime and a democratic regime. We also know that regime transitions constitute a fundamental political change. More broadly, a democratic transition refers to a political process of movement aimed at establishing a democratic political system initiated either from above, meaning that the elites drive the process, or from below, meaning that it is mass-driven or driven by the population. It could also be a combination of the two, allowing bargaining and compromising among different political forces for the resolution of social conflict, institutionalizing a pluralist political structure and procedures by which different political forces are allowed to compete for power, including the regular transfer of power through free and fair elections. I'm going to talk about four types of modes of transition. Huntington outlines these in his 1991 work, The Third Wave, Democratization in the Late 20th Century. The first type of transition is called transformation. This is when the elites in power take the lead in bringing about democracy. That is, those in the ruling elite initiate a process of democratization. They look to convert the regime from an authoritarian one to a democratic one. And we've seen this process play out in a number of countries. Some good examples of a transformation are Taiwan, in the late 1980s and early 1990s when the nationalist government uh, transitioned the state to become a democratic one. This also happened in Spain after Francisco Franco died. Brazil at the end of the military regime in the mid-1980s. 
And the USSR was also a transformative process when the communist government effectively dissolved itself and democracy took root. The second type of transition is what Huntington refers to as replacement. So this is when opposition groups take the lead in bringing about democracy and the authoritarian regime either collapses or it is overthrown. Uh, we may think of a replacement as occurring in a revolution. So an example of a replacement would be Portugal in 1974 when the Estado Novo effectively ended via the Carnation Revolution. Um, another example of a replacement is Romania when Nicolae Ceausescu was effectively overthrown by the population um, and eventually him and his wife were executed on Christmas Day in 1989. The third type of transitional mode is transplacement. A transplacement now is a cooperative process. This is where joint action by the government and opposition groups brings about a transition to democracy. And we've also seen this happen in a number of cases. Two of the most prominent examples are South Korea in the 1980s and Poland, for example, when they conducted roundtable talks with the Solidarity Trade Union in 1989, and that eventually resulted in a transition to democracy. The final type of transitional mode is foreign intervention. So this is when a dominant external military force effectively invades a country and replaces the existing regime with a democratic one. One of the best examples of this, at least during the third wave of democratization, which is effectively from 1973 up until about 19, the 1990s, um, would have been Panama when the United States removed Manuel Noriega from power after he stole an election and then in, installed the, the government that actually won, won the election. It's worth noting when we're talking about the mode of transition that there is a very fine line between a regime replacement or revolution and a transplacement, right? So a transplacement, the government, those in power are willing to negotiate a transition to democracy. They are willing to sit down with the opposition group and negotiate the movement away from authoritarianism. Likely under a transplacement, the incumbent government realizes that the opposition is, is growing quickly and that they have the power and the numbers to negotiate a regime change. In a replacement, the, the incumbent government miscalculates the strength of the opposition group. And so they refuse to negotiate a regime change. And the fate of these dictators is not very favorable. If you look at what happened with Nicolae Ceausescu in Romania, he basically refused to negotiate any sort of transition and the opposition had increased in such great numbers that he was overthrown, chased through the countryside, him and his wife. They were captured, they were tried, and they were both executed on Christmas Day in 1989. So those are the four modes of transition. That's actually how democracy happens, the actual process for installing a democratic regime. The final step in the democratization process is that of consolidation. So once states transition to democracy, how do they stay and become more democratic? Consolidation equates with endurance, how do states deepen their democracy. Consolidation moves us beyond a procedural minimalist definition of democracy, which is generally free and fair elections. Consolidation means much, much more than that. Um, Larry Diamond explains consolidation as following. He says it's a broad and deep legitimation such that all significant political actors at both the elite and the mass levels, believe that the democratic regime is the most right and appropriate for their society, better than any other realistic alternative they can imagine. So we're moving beyond simply free and fair elections, which is a foundational point for a state to be considered democratic. And we're really looking, when we talk about consolidation, we're talking about regimes 
that look to democracy for solving their issues. So, Linz and Stefan offer an influential framework of consolidation through which democracy becomes routinized and deeply internalized in social, institutional, and even psychological life as well as in political calculations for achieving success. One way I often tell my students to think about consolidation is that a consolidated democracy means that once a state is democratic, there is basically almost no chance that, will, that it will ever return to dictatorship. Consolidation really means that democracy is here to stay. And so that's our discussion of democratization and the three steps. Step one, precondition. Step two, the mode of transition. And step three, the consolidation or the deepening of democracy. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And in a future video, I will expand upon the mode of transitions and go into greater detail. Thanks for watching the video and have a great day.